And then feel free to also share your contact information in the chat and just make sure when you're in the chat, it doesn't say just panelists, you have to switch that to panelists and attendees so that they can see what you're writing to them. A lot of people put in phone numbers or email um, addresses or, or, or websites. Any information that you'd like to type into the chat to the attendees, you're welcome to do so. All right, everyone, welcome to the virtual college fair, American Heritage uh, Virtual College Fair. Uh, you have some great uh, folks here to present. You have Connecticut College, Maine Maritime uh, Academy, Northeastern University, Sacred Heart, Massachusetts Maritime, and Quinnipiac uh, University. And you are able to ask questions anytime throughout this presentation. The way that you're able to do that is at the bottom of your screen, there's a little Q and A button. You just hit that and you're able to type in some questions and the facilitators or the, the presenters here will answer your questions throughout these presentations. Um, you're able to also sign up for more sessions. Um, so make sure that you're able to do that. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists are not able to see or hear you. So if you have questions, again, it's important that you hit that Q&A button throughout these presentations to make sure um, they can answer them. This is going to be recorded, um, so that will be available to you on the same page that you registered. And we are going to get started with our first college, and that is Connecticut College. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And here we go. Welcome, everybody. So my name is Corbin Maynard. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here at Connecticut College. I'm also a Con alum, last of 2017, so fairly recent, though not as recent as I'd like it to be. But campus is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is on the southern end. These are all dorms and academic buildings as well, so made of stone. Oftentimes people describe it as similar to a Hogwarts aesthetic as well. And this is down by our athletic center. So this is the Thames River. Not sure why we don't call it the Thames, but we are located in southeastern Connecticut uh, in the city of New London. And we call it a city, but it's a cute artsy city, about 30, 35,000 people or so. Really great restaurants. I uh, hear me talk a lot about food, definitely ate my way through college. Freshman 15 is a very real thing, I can promise you that. But this was actually taken during Sail Fest because there's usually arts and music festivals going on uh, throughout the year, which is pretty cool. But museums, art galleries, thrift stores, restaurants, uh, we're also smack dab in the middle of New York and Boston, about two, two and a half hours away from either city, with an Amtrak station located right in New London. So you still have access to the surrounding regions as well. So it doesn't feel like you're isolated or stuck in the middle of nowhere. Also, uh, it's definitely a great spot to go and be and have access to the surrounding areas as well. Now let's talk a little bit about the uh, curriculum. Uh, we have a new thing here called Connections. Uh, for the plenty of folks on campus, I like to call it Connections. But I mean, academics, that's the real reason you're looking at school and the real reason you want to go to college. You have until the end of your sophomore year to declare a major. And so there's so many different opportunities for students to choose from. Plus, if you're not sure or you've interested in multiple areas, roughly 30% of our students actually double major. So it's really common to find these different areas of interest and find unique relationships between them. And over 69% have at least one minor. Plus there's tons of opportunities for students to engage in independent research. But one of the coolest things about the Connections curriculum is this new system called Pathways and Centers. Basically the big difference between these Two is that it's actually ways for you to engage in a field or a subject you're interested in, but might, uh, might not want to fully major or minor in as well. So it's opportunities for you to take extra courses and have research opportunities and find different parallels between all these different themes and topics and draw these relationships or connections between these different fields of studies as well. Pathways is a little bit more flexible. You get to choose the courses that relate to this theme or topic and how it relates back to your majors and minors. So it's not replacing the major minor, but instead supporting what the information that you're learning there. And then the uh, centers, these are a little bit more rigid. You have to apply to them and they have built-in programs, courses that you have to take, research projects, all these different components that are vital to learning. 
but you still get this really hands-on approach. So it's two different ways to go about education. And it's really up to the student to really discern, okay, what type of learning environment do I want? Do I want something where I have more pure ownership, where I get to kind of dictate where I'm going? Or do I want something that is going to kind of be planned out and mapped out for me, but I really get to engage with as well? You get to choose either pathway or center. You don't have to choose uh, both. So it's really nice. And once again, it's a way for you to complement what you're studying rather than fully replacing and find these really unique ways to find these passions and interests that you have and drawing these connections between all of these different topics. We also have the honor code and shared governance. And this is pretty awesome. It's a major component to life at Connecticut College. But the honor code, we're one of 12 schools in the entire country to have the honor code the way that we do because it both it impacts both social and academic life at Connecticut College. Academically allows for self-scheduled exams and these are unproctored as well. So it's a five day period, three throughout the day, where you get to go and choose what exam you're taking during each of the time slots. So it's nice to have that academic freedom because if you're someone like me where I'm a terrible test taker, it's nice to kind of have that breath of saying, okay, I get to choose it's on my own terms when I'm taking this exam. So it's nice to have that level of responsibility plus engagement in the classroom. It's respectful of each other's opinions for a collaborative school. So you're really conversing with your peers, sharing your opinions with your peers and professors rather than being lectured at or on right your wrong type mentality. So it creates that level of respect. And then socially, it just holds everyone and everything to a higher standard. Treat everyone and everything with respect. It allows students to run clubs, organizations on campus, be involved. And then one of the biggest components of being involved on campus is shared governance. I mean, this is supposed to be your home away from home for the next four years. How does it feel like home if you feel like you're not part of the decision-making process? So with shared governance, students are a federal component to making decisions for campus, renovations, new programs, events we want to be holding, policies and actions, the mindset and policies of the college, all of that students actually help to create and keep an eye on as well and really mandate as well. So it's really nice. It's, you're really respected on, on campus to have the shared relationship because there's three major entities, the staff, the faculty, and the students. And so those all three components coming together and working together to make this shared living environment and space and making it as welcoming as possible and also really allowing you to engage with all these different fields. So it creates new opportunities all the time for students to be involved. Students are elected into these positions and meet every week on Thursday evenings, but these meetings are also open to the entire student body. So even if you're not an elected official, you're still able to be a part of this conversation and feel like your voice is being represented and heard while on campus. We also have the Hale Center for Career Development. It's nationally recognized for the work that they do here. It's a four-year career plan, so something that goes on. There's tons of resources for students to help you find the best internships and jobs for you as well, and a whole team of advisors to really help support and guide you as well. And so it's really awesome having it for four years, not just waiting until you're an upperclassman. Definitely feel free to check out different ways to interact with us online. And then this is actually the contact information of your area counselor, Ashton Healy. She couldn't make it today. So thanks for being with me, but thank you so much and welcome to Connecticut College. Thank you, Connecticut College. Uh, next presenting, we will have Maine Maritime Academy. Hey everybody, how's it going? Can you see all right? That'll work out, let me see if I can present this for you. Um, so, my name is Elizabeth Allaby. I'm an admissions counselor at Maine Maritime Academy. And those two audience are actually really fortunate because you're going to hear from not just us as a Maritime Academy, but also Massachusetts Maritime lately. So coming from Florida and Ocean State, you might already have some interest in the maritime industry. So um, we are one of seven state maritime uh, institutions throughout the US. Um, we do offer uh, 23 different degree programs. We're pretty small. We have about 1,950 to 1,000 students at any given time. Um, and because we're so small, we're able to offer a pretty small student to faculty ratio, about 11 to 1, or you can kind of expect an average class size of around 20. Uh, Embedded sort of in our different curriculum and in our campus, we have seven different professional licensing opportunities as the name Maritime implies. We're quite focused on this industry as well as a few others. And I'll mention those in just a moment. Um, but the majority of our students are getting some sort of licensure from the Coast Guard. I'll talk about that as well. Um, as you can see, uh, 
we are a very uh, ocean focused uh, institution. So at our working waterfront, we have over 60 training research and pleasure vessels that are available to all of our students, regardless of whether or not you are getting a Coast Guard license. Just something to keep in mind, of course. Uh, we do offer uh, over 20 student driven clubs and organizations. So although we are a smaller campus and a very small community in Castine, Maine, we're located about the middle of the coast of Maine. Um, there's still plenty to do around campus between the waterfront, the different student clubs. Uh, Acadia National Park is about one hour away. Bangor, uh, fourth largest town in Maine, is about one hour away. And we are right on the coast, so the ocean is just feet from your classroom. Um, we specialize in four areas of academic study. So if you're interested in engineering, be it um, marine engineering, you want to go ship out, work aboard a vessel, power engineering, you prefer shore-based engineering, um, and you're more interested in power generation, transportation, these students are getting all of that good navigational knowledge and training to eventually become deck officers, work aboard vessels. Um, we do offer an international business and logistics program. So if you're interested in international trade, imports, exports, things of that nature, um, there's a good home for you here. And our last program that we offer is ocean studies. Uh, so all of our students who study ocean studies, marine bio, oceanography, uh, they're really fortunate because just steps out of their classroom doors is the ocean or we also have a research vessel. So if they're not uh, taking samples, as you see in this picture here in the intertidal zone, then they're out and about aboard our research vessel learning all those different pieces of equipment. Um, and also if they're interested, they're able to get that Coast Guard certification and license to be able to operate research vessels. So that's a pretty special piece. Uh, sort of our hallmark, we are a very, very hands-on school. So if you know that you like to uh, work with your hands and you're not, um, quite as keen on all the different lecture style learning, then you'll definitely find a good home at Maine Maritime. So all of our majors, doesn't matter what it is, there are lab components um, that mirror anything that you learn in the textbook in your lecture classes. So that way uh, you have the skills and the knowledge that we say you do. And by the time you graduate, it's really muscle memory. That's one of the things um, that highlights our students by the time they graduate and they're able to go into that job industry. Uh, one thing to note about us, um, we are a school that has a regiment. So for any of our students in marine engineering or marine transportation who are receiving the unlimited tonnage licenses from the Coast Guard, the largest licenses you can get, it is a requirement from the Coast Guard to be in our uniformed student body. About 65% of our student body is in the regiment. Um, they are required to wear a uniform. They have some different pieces that they have to focus on part of uh, the Coast Guard requirements. But uh, for the most part, all of these students are not going into the military when they graduate, although they look like it. They become what are called commercial mariners. So they're out shipping out on either cargo vessels, oil vessels, maybe cruise lines, things of that nature, tankers. Um, and it's just a requirement to be in the regiment. It's voluntary uh, to any students in any of the other majors I just mentioned. Uh, it's just an expectation of the students in those particular programs. So about 65% of our student body uh, is in this regimental program. Um, what to expect during your summers here at Maine Maritime? We keep you pretty busy, both academically and over your summers. So whether or not you're getting one of those Coast Guard licenses, you're studying business, you're studying ocean science, um, power engineering, marine engineering, you will have some form of a training, an internship, a co-op, um, maybe a cadet shipping experience that gets you out in the field, out on a vessel, out working for a professional company. So you can grow that network, earn some extra money in the summer and really build up your resume. That way, by the time you graduate, uh, you really do have a nicely polished resume. You've got a really good foothold out in any of our different industries. Um, and you can really kind of hit the ground running, so to say. So over 90% of our students are employed in their fields within 90 days of graduation. And this is a statistic that we're really proud of. So keep in mind, we're a small school of about 1,000 students, but our students really go on to work all over the country, all over the world, um, and that often starts here on our campus. Oh, there we go. Um, we do have a variety of D3 sports. So if you're interested, I encourage you to check those out. I'm gonna kind of speed up here so I can make sure I get through it all. 
Um, these are sort of our different rankings of how we sort of fell in line with some other colleges out in New England. So if you're interested in coming north um, and you're ready to embrace some cold winters, then I encourage you to check out Maine Maritime. Thank you so much and have a good rest of your night. Thank you so much. And then of course, um, any contact information if you wanna throw in the chat for anyone, uh, that's great. Um, next we have Northeastern University. Hello everyone. Let me just go ahead and pull up my screen and hopefully you all can see this. All right, hi everyone. My name is Jordana Bischoff. I am an assistant director of undergraduate admission at Northeastern University and we are located in Boston, Massachusetts. One of the kind of signature experiences that we offer at Northeastern is experiential learning. And what this is, it is the combination of classroom academics, rigorous coursework, um, in addition to hands-on applied learning experiences. So with that, we will jump into the academic experience at Northeastern. We have um, seven different undergraduate colleges plus the Explore program. So students have a variety of academic paths that they can choose from. We have over 220 majors and over 130 combined majors, which takes two fields and infuses them into one degree program. So if you have multiple areas of academic interests, uh, we'd like to think that we have a major that you might be interested in or a combined major that you might be interested in as well. Um, we have a lot of flexible different academic opportunities for students and we have over 50% of our students have more than just a singular major. So whether that's a combined major, a double major, a major with a minor, whatever the case is for you, we want students to be able to pursue any and all of their academic interests. And we also have a new path core curriculum. So these are skills and competencies that we want students to be able to graduate with. Um, and there are about 50 different classes that fulfill each of those skills. So as a student, you have a lot of flexibility to take classes that interest you, um, as opposed to having a prescribed list of courses that every student has to take. So there's a lot of academic flexibility. Um, and even though we are considered a mid to large size university with 18,000 undergraduate students, we do our best to keep the academic experience uh, as small and kind of tight knit as possible so students can build relationships with their professors, with their faculty members, um, with their peers as well. So our average class size at Northeastern is 24 students. Our students to faculty ratio is 14 to one um, and two thirds of our classes actually have 20 students or fewer. So while we do have kind of that large size, you will have the academic experience that is very much catered to your interests um, and to your um, academic goals as well, okay? The other side of that experiential learning model that I talked about is the hands-on applied experiences. And we offer four main ways that students can have these hands-on experiences. We offer co-ops, which are six month periods where students are not in the classroom, students are not earning credit. Instead, they're working full time at one of our 3000 worldwide co-op partner employers, okay? Um, students can choose to do up to three of these six month co-op experiences, allowing them to graduate with up to 18 months of real work in your field, okay? Students have a co-op advisor that helps them navigate the process of searching for these co-op positions. And most of these co-op positions are paid. Um, so we do wanna make sure that our students are getting compensated for the work that they do as it is valuable professional development experience, okay? Um, we also offer students the ability to have global experiences and opportunities. So if you want to study abroad for a semester, you're more than welcome to do that. If you would rather have a short-term study abroad opportunity where you're going abroad for one of our summer sessions, those are also open to students as well. So students can take advantage of taking two classes worth of credits um, and earning credit toward their degree um, while having kind of that bite-sized piece of, a, of an abroad experience. You can also do your co-op overseas so students can get that professional work experience on another continent if they would like to. Um, and you can also start off your college education through an abroad program that we offer called NUN. So there's a variety of ways that students can have that global experience if they would like to. It is not required though. So if you would rather stay in, in Boston on campus, that is perfectly fine too. The third offer opportunity of experiential learning is called service learning. This is where we incorporate elements of community service and community engagement into the college coursework. So you can take classes um, and have elements of community engagement woven into the curriculum of the course. This allows you to familiarize yourself with our Boston campus and our neighbors in the city of Boston. And the final method of experiential learning is research. So Northeastern is a tier one research institution and students can get involved in research as early as their very first semester on campus. 
Um, so students can kind of pick and choose how they want to apply these real world experiences into their time with us at the university, okay? We also have students coming to us from all over the world. So as I mentioned, we have 18,000 undergraduate students. We have over 120 different countries represented. We have all 50 states represented. Students come to us from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life. Um, and so students really will meet, you'll meet students who are very similar to you in some ways. You'll also meet students who are very different than you in other ways. And collectively, everybody will be able to learn and grow from each other. We have 10 identity-based and affinity-based cultural centers on our campus. So if students wanna learn more about a specific identity or affinity that they might want to, um, that they either identify with or wanna learn more about, those kind of centers run programming throughout the academic year as well, okay? In terms of how our students get involved, we have over 500 clubs and organizations on our campus, uh, ranging from academic-based clubs and honor societies to things like Greek life, recreational-based clubs and organizations, performing arts groups, political groups, spiritual and religious organizations, you name it. We probably have it at Northeastern. And if we don't have it, students can start it. So even since I've been at the university, we've had over a hundred new clubs join our campus and there's always new things to do for students to stay engaged. We are Division I Athletic University, and we have 18 Division I sports. If students don't want to get involved at the Division I level, we also have club and intramural sports as well. So however active students want to be is perfectly fine with us, um, and that's totally up to students as to how they want to kind of get exposure to other opportunities beyond the classroom, whether that is clubs and organizations or athletics. As I mentioned, we are located in the city of Boston. Um, and if you aren't familiar with the city of Boston, there are 250,000 college students that move into the city every fall. The average age drops by about 10 years and there's a lot to do in the city for young adults and college age students. Um, so a lot of museums and concert venues and athletic facilities um, offer student discounts or free and reduced pricing. There's also restaurants that offer student discounts. Um, there's lots of different exhibitions and things rotate seasonally as well. So every season there is new opportunities to do and we are right in the heart of the city. So access to um, other neighborhoods within Boston, like the North End where uh, this is kind of like our version of a little Italy. We're also right next to Back Bay which has a lot of great food as well in the Fenway neighborhood. So there's a lot to do in the city and students have access to getting around as well. So that is sort of the high level overview. Please feel free to ask questions in the Q&A feature. Um, and uh, I will also go ahead and share the contact information as well, but thank you. Thank you. Um, and that is a great reminder to, you know, we're halfway through our presentations that at the bottom of your screen, there's a little Q&A button. So if there is anyone out there that has any questions for our panelists, please make sure that you click on that. And uh, panelists also just keep an eye on that Q&A and answer any questions that students have. Next, we have Sacred Heart University. Hi there, how is everyone doing tonight? Um, just let me do this real quick. Sorry. <laughs> Hang on just one second. All right, I can't seem to get this to work. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Um, hi everyone, my name is Kim Perret. I am Director of Regional Admissions at Sacred Heart University and we are located in Fairfield, Connecticut. We are a uh, private Roman Catholic university with about uh, 5,200 undergraduate students. So I'll start with just an academic overview and some of the facts about Sacred Heart. Um, we do have several colleges uh, that you can um, major in one of those areas. We have our College of Arts and Sciences that um, has our School of Communication, Media and the Arts. Our School of Social Work is also in the College of Arts and Sciences. We have our Isabel Farrington College of Education, our Jack Welch College of Business and Technology, which does house our uh, School of Computer Science and Engineering. 
We have our Davis and Henley College of Nursing and our College of Health Professions. So we do offer two campuses um, at Sacred Heart University and um, they're only about a quarter of a mile apart from each other. And as I said before, 5,200 undergraduate students with a total population of about 8,000. That includes our grad students as well. Uh, Sacred Heart is very well known for uh, athletics. We are division one and we have about 34 um, athletic teams. We also have about 32 club sports um, and a lot of intramurals as well. So we're a very athletic campus, a lot of school spirit, uh, go pioneers. And uh, we are ranked number 13 in the country for uh, community service students who give back to the community and number 10 for happiest students. We have a lot of individualized attention in our classrooms and our average class size is 22 students. All right, um, I just wanted to go over a, a few of these uh, College of Health Professions majors that we have. Our students are able to be pre-admitted into some of our health uh, professions uh, majors or master's programs and graduate program or doctorate programs as well. You can see them listed there. And um, it's great for students who are coming in as a freshman who really know exactly what they wanna do in the healthcare field. Uh, you can already have your six or seven years completely planned out for you. And a really important thing for Sacred Heart students is to get involved in extracurriculars. Uh, we know just from research, students do better in their classes if they are also involved outside of the classroom. So we have plenty of opportunities for you at Sacred Heart. We have uh, a lot of clubs and organizations and active student government. Uh, several academic clubs. We do have a fraternity and sorority life as well. And uh, I mentioned our athletic programs, a large performing arts area as well. So a lot of different dance groups, a lot of um, uh, theater, musical theater, straight acting, a lot of choral groups, and those are scholarship opportunities as well. Our campus ministry is very popular among our students too. And again, many, many, many volunteer opportunities. We also have um, uh, two campuses abroad. So we do have a campus in Ireland and also a campus in Luxembourg. And uh, just to want to mention a few things about living at Sacred Heart. Um, we do have a very dynamic residential life. We are in a growth mode at Sacred Heart. We've been building new residence halls over the last few years and they're absolutely beautiful, uh, state of the art. So there is room for students to live all four years on campus. Um, there is a two year requirement. So we have plenty of virtual tours available for you guys. You can go to YouTube or you can go to our website and you can see all of the um, beautiful areas we have for residents. And these are just a few photos of our, uh, of our newest additions. Um, we have a new diner on campus. There's a small picture at the bottom there of our new campus, which was the former um, headquarters of General Electric. Uh, we have a brand new recreation center. Um, and then there's a shot right there of our upper quad, which uh, we just completed a new residence hall facility uh, just this past month. And uh, I'll end it there. Um, again, I'm uh, Kim and I am Director of Regional Admissions. I'm actually based in Florida. So um, hi to all of you uh, Boca Del Rey students. I can't wait to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, from Sacred Heart. Uh, next up we have Massachusetts Maritime University. Awesome. So, Hello everyone, I'm Rose. I'm an admissions counselor here at Mass Maritime. Um, so just to start, here are some quick facts about us. We are located in Buzzards Bay, which is in Cape Cod. Um, it's about an hour uh, south of Boston and probably about 45 minutes from Providence, Rhode Island. We are a small school with about 1700 students. Uh, similarly to Maine Maritime, we are one of the state maritime academies in the nation. Uh, we are a public university of Massachusetts. And because of that, we are not military. You do not have to 
enlist or commission um, by coming here. Uh, I'll get to it in a second, but all of our academics are STEM based and every student on campus is in the regiment. We do guarantee housing for all four years. And then here are the different tuition breakdowns depending on where you live. So out of state would be about 42,000 for all five of those things, your tuition fees, housing, meals, and your sea bag, which is what we call your uniform. So here are the seven different majors that we offer. Marine engineering and marine transportation are the two licensed track majors. So upon graduation, those two will come out with their US Coast Guard license, and you'll be able to pretty much immediately get a job and ship out uh, working at some kind of career at sea. Our other five majors are a little more flexible. You do not have to go into the maritime or shipping industry if you don't want to. Um, I would say that emergency management and our marine science, safety, and environmental protection majors have the most flexibility when it comes to uh, what you want to do with your career. So we have this learn, do, learn philosophy, where you learn in the classroom first, kind of your basics, and then you go out into the world, whether it's on sea term that our marine engineering and transportation students have to do every year, or if it's an experiential learning or some other form of an internship, you take what you learned in the classroom, you apply that to the, the real world, um, whatever internship you have. And then you bring what you learned outside the classroom back in. Um, so that's kind of what we mean by a learn, do, learn philosophy. All of these majors have to do some sort of co-op, internship, or experiential learning. Um, so an experiential learning or a co-op is kind of like a mixture of an internship and study abroad. So for our C term, um, so some of our students will ship out for about six weeks in the winter, head down to the Caribbean, um, sometimes Florida, uh, sometimes cross through the Panama Canal. Um, and those students are actually up in the bridge in the engine room running the entire ship. Um, but for our non-licensed track majors, for example, our international maritime business major, sometimes they'll get an internship over in the UK or South Africa. So you're actually working, but you're doing it abroad. Um, so it's kind of a mixture of both of those things. So a little bit more about the regiment here on campus. Uh, this top picture here where they're wearing their all blacks is kind of what you would wear on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you'd have to wear it to classes, to go get food, anything like that. Um, it is structured to help you build those leadership skills. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity to advance in leadership positions throughout the regiment um, as you advance your college career. But the, the skills that you learn all four years are geared to help you in your career. Um, so all of those leadership skills, time management, um, knowing when to be a leader versus when to be a follower, um, all of those are kind of packed into the regiment. So here's just some more information on campus life as a whole. So over on the left, uh, we are a D3 school and these are all of our sports teams available. And then over on the right is more on the club side of things. So we do have a student government association that will put on weekly events, our big annual Emory Rice Day event. Um, they also sponsor a student lounge. So you can go there and hang out and play pool or foosball, air hockey. Um, you can get discounted drinks and snacks there as well. It's just a nice place to kind of relax after your day, after your workout, anything like that. And all of our clubs on campus range, um, whether they're academic or special interests or sports. Um, we even have some military clubs on campus um, because while we're not military, they're definitely, from the nature of it, um, people that are interested in enlisting. And then we also have Seventh Company, which is a little different from most institutions. So all of our dorms are called companies and everyone in seventh company is either in band, honor guard or drill. 
So they're the ones that perform at football games. Um, they do national parades in DC and Boston as well. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, we have that for you. And then here is some contact information if you wanna connect with any of us that I'll also put in the chat. Um, but for our Instagrams, it's our Mass Maritime Instagram, the athletics and then SGA. But it was nice hanging out with everyone. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of the presentation. Thank you very much, Massachusetts. Okay, uh, next we are going to have Quinnipiac University. And I am certain I will be corrected if I did that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you actually nailed it. That was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Tim O'Sullivan. I am the uh, Senior Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Quinnipiac University. So thank you uh, all for joining us tonight. And I'm just going to get my slides going here for you. So we are a medium-sized private university located in Hamden, Connecticut. Uh, that is just outside of the city of New Haven, if you've ever heard of New Haven, and uh, a lot of people consider New Haven the uh, pizza capital of the world, so you might have seen us on the Travel Channel or uh, Food Network, that's for sure. Um, now, where I always like to start, though, is just to explain the three campuses that Quinnipiac uh, has, because we have grown over the last few years. Uh, and I like to talk about how it, you know, incorporates into the overall experience for each student. So you do have our main campus of the Mount Carmel campus. This is where you will live as a first and second year student, as well as all of your academic classes take place on the Mount Carmel class, uh, campus. So your entire first two year uh, experience takes place on Mount Carmel. All of our major academic buildings, you know, the library that's open 24 hours, learning center for extra help. Uh, majority of our athletic facilities, they're all located here on the Mount Carmel campus. Now, starting your uh, junior year, you will actually move up to the York Hill campus. This is our upperclassmen housing campus. It's non-academic, so there are no classes whatsoever here. Um, and it, it is a beautiful, beautiful campus. I say up to York Hill uh, because it is perched up on a small mountain. Um, so the, as you can see from the pictures, the views on this campus are gorgeous. Uh, obviously, first and second year students can, of course, go up here and utilize the facilities, because as you can see, there are three major features to the campus. Upperclassmen housing, of course, which is all in the form of townhouses and apartment style. But then you also have our People's United Center, which is our large athletic arena for our Division I men's and women's ice hockey and our Division I men's and women's basketball. Um, so you can imagine during the winter months, this is a very popular uh, area to be for our students. Uh, and then last but not least is our beautiful Rocky Top Student Center, which obviously has everything that all the students up on the York Hill campus would need and anything that first and second year students want to utilize as well uh, in terms of study rooms, dining hall, uh, there's a fitness center, they have spin class, uh, and yoga classes up here on the, on the York Hill campus. And then you have a large fireplace uh, room with leather couches set up. It's really nice and relaxing. And then in the one picture, you could see there's a nice large deck area outside where you can have your lunch and you're staring off the top of the mountain and looking at the city of New Haven. So it's a really, really nice relaxing place to be. Uh, the third campus that we have is our North Haven campus. Uh, and this is obviously, as you can see, strictly for our School of Health Sciences uh, majors, School of Nursing. Our med school and law school are located here as well. Uh, so it's much more of a professional style campus. You see a lot of students walking around here with scrubs on and shirts and ties. And uh, School of Education is located here as well, which is a master's degree program for Quinnipiac. Um, so again, usually students aren't on this campus until later in their program. So maybe the earliest you would be on this campus is junior year. Majority of students are on this campus later on in their, in their programs. Uh, now, I want to talk really quick before I go into our size is just our location. I know I mentioned we're right outside the city of New Haven, but uh, which is really convenient for our students. It's a great social scene, great restaurants to go to and fun stuff to do. But in New Haven is a major train station. And from our campus, you can actually get to New York City and Boston very easily. So we are actually almost identical distances to both major cities. Uh, and that plays a huge role for our students, not only socially, of course, uh, it gives you lots of options for off campus, you know, uh, social life, but uh, more importantly for internships, we are an experiential learning university. 
And what I, I know some of my colleagues on here had mentioned that as well, experiential learning, and we're no different. We want you out there applying what you're learning in the classroom, in the professional setting, getting your foot in the door for potential employment, uh, and just building up your resume while you're with us, right? That professional growth piece, which is really, really important to us at Quinnipiac. Now, size-wise, I said we're a medium-sized university. We have about 10,000 total students, as you can see. Um, and what that enables us to do is kind of have a healthy balance of social life versus academic life is how I like to describe it. It's, uh, you know, socially, you feel like you're at a larger university, right? But then academically, uh, you know, you're never in a classroom uh, that's larger than 24 students. So our average uh, classroom size is 24 students. I mean, it's, it, you don't have these large lecture halls at Quinnipiac. We don't have them. Super hands-on. Student to faculty ratio is 16 to 1. You're going to know every professor by name. They will know you by name as well. What's great is they serve as your advisors also. So you develop working relationships with your uh, professors within your area of interest at Quinnipiac. Now, we have uh, almost 150 clubs and organizations. They, those range from everything from cultural clubs to, uh, you know, athletic clubs to social clubs to academic clubs. We have 21 Division I athletic programs, so tons of school spirit at Quinnipiac. If you don't know, uh, we are a huge hockey school. Hockey is definitely very, very popular at Quinnipiac. Uh, and then, of course, we have pre-professional uh, clubs. Greek life is wildly popular at Quinnipiac. About 30% of our students uh, participate in Greek life. It's much more community service-based, though. Um, so lots of stuff to do outside the classroom. We have 58 undergraduate majors to choose from. But what's really unique about Quinnipiac is here, as you can see on this slide, is our dual degree programs that we offer. Um, so there's very unique experiences that you can uh, save money and time at Quinnipiac with the programs that you choose. And then, of course, applying. There's four ways to apply. You'll see this on our website as well. You want to make sure that if you are applying to any of our health science and, and uh, health science majors and our nursing major, that you do follow those deadlines, right? We don't want you to miss any deadlines and uh, unfortunately not be considered for any specific programs. Uh, and how to apply. We are a common app school, two to three letters of recommendation. As you can see here, the only program that we actually require a test score is, a, is our direct entry six-year physician assistant program. Okay, so here's some contact for you. Uh, if uh, and I will type it in the chat, but I appreciate you all joining us tonight, and thank you so much for listening about Quinnipiac University. All right, uh, thank you to all the presenters. We have a few minutes left, so we have um, time for one question. And the let me just share my screen real quick. All right. All right, what advice, and then everyone can turn their camera on, all the presenters, if you would, please. Um, in the same order that we went, starting with Connecticut, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we're just gonna give some quick answers. Awesome, biggest thing is do your research, know the schools, but then trust your gut. It's gonna be your home away from home, so make sure it feels right for you. That feeling is gonna be really important in your college search. Um, my advice would be is just keep yourself open and don't be afraid to ask those questions. All of us here love questions. So if you have one, make sure that you pass that along. And my other piece of advice would be, please capitalize the letter I in your essays. My pieces of advice, my first one is very similar to what was just mentioned. We are all here as resources for you. So please feel free to reach out to the admissions teams at the schools that you're considering. Uh, there's a lot of, of similar things that you may be asked to do at various schools you're applying to, but there's also going to be a lot of differences. So make sure you're familiarizing yourself with application requirements um, and what is expected of you as the applicant as you're going through the process and familiarize, your, familiarize yourself with the resources available to you. My second piece of advice is be aware of deadlines. Um, they're so important. And if you have questions, um, reach out to the schools about what their deadlines are. And it is, is very important that, that you make sure that you understand and are aware of, of what school's deadlines are for the different types of opportunities available. Hi, yes, um, my advice would be um, also to use your resources. And I know that uh, at your high school, you have excellent counselors and they are providing information for you. They're providing um, different seminars and sessions for you. And please take advantage of that because it's really, really helpful information. They'll have things for your parents as well. So uh, make sure you, you use your counselors at your school. 
One thing I always like to say is don't stress out about having, you know, the highest level, like an AP or an honors class, if you aren't comfortable taking something or overloading yourself with extracurriculars just to get into college. Um, it's definitely not needed. And I know that's a big myth that you have to kill all your free time just to get into college, but please do not stress out about that. Um, find the things that you're passionate about and really hone in on those skills um, and develop those. I always love going last because I feel like I'm repeating everybody and what they said, but <laughs> um, so, I mean, honestly, guys, have fun with the process. It's don't don't be uh, super stressed out. Utilize your resources, like everybody had mentioned. I can't reiterate enough. I'm always here for you. Always reach out to me with any questions or concerns that you may have. I'm I'm happy to get you connected with people at the university that you're looking to speak directly to, whether that be faculty or different departments on campus. Um, but have fun with the process. Attend the events that we're uh, hosting. I know you're getting bombarded with emails right now, but these virtual events that we're hosting are going to be super informational. But most importantly, in my opinion, you're going to be hearing from the current students at these universities and colleges that you're interested in. And I think that that is, you know, it's invaluable to hear directly from the sources, you know, that are living, living it right now as we, as we speak. So uh, definitely pay attention to your email accounts and reach out to the universities and admissions counselors that you have strong interest in. Thank you so much to um, all the presenters and all the attendees. Uh, there, as soon as you close this, there will be a quick four question survey that's going to appear. So make sure you take a few moments to fill that out. Um, you can sign up for more sessions. And of course, the recording and all of the chat will be available to you the same place that you signed up um, for this fair. So thank you again to all the presenters and for all of the attendees and have a great night.